Hi, I'm Chaula Jane. As he said, I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina, and I'm a GIS DBA. So I think I'm one of the few ones here, or rather I haven't met anyone really doing what I do here. Um, so GIS DBA basically deals with spatial and non-spatial data. And um, another peculiar thing which I found was that we use PostgreSQL for most of our production databases, but the actual spatial element which we use is not PostGIS. We use a proprietary um, database there, or, or uh, extension, which is called Spatial Database Engine, which is uh, made by Environmental Systems Research Institute, known as ESRI. There are a few people here from ESRI. And the GIS software we use is ArcGIS, which is like the most well-known proprietary GIS software in the world. Um, Mecklenburg County, uh, and again, I'm one of the few people here from public sector too. Mecklenburg County is located in the southwestern region of North Carolina. It's borders South Carolina and North Carolina, as you can see. And uh, Charlotte, Sh Charlotte is one of the, One second. Okay. Charlotte is one of the largest cities in this county. The present population is about a million. And it's also, as many, many of you may be knowing, that it's the second largest banking center in the US, uh, home to Bank of America. So uh, um, the GIS department is about 40 people. And we managed both the city of Charlotte data bases and also the Mecklenburg County, which is where city of Charlotte is located. Um, there are many, many business units which use this data. Some of the most known to people are 911 services. Then our land records department, where you get all the property information and maps. Um, this, you know, the local department of transportation and schools and so on. Like we, we, we are a huge group. We are about 40 to 50 people. 20 of us are the editors who do the actual editing of the data, the land records and the addressing data. About 10 or so do the actual mapping and analysis and the remaining are programmers and DBAs and I belong to that group. So what is a GIS data source? Um, I don't know, is anyone familiar with GIS other than post-GIS? Post okay. So GIS data sources are generally ST feature classes. In our case, since we use ST with PostgreSQL, we, uh, so ST feature classes, or you could be calling it post-GIS feature classes if you're using post-GIS. Um, then there are personal geo databases because uh, most people will have to pull these databases from the enterprise database server onto their desktop and very often they have to manipulate it for analysis and personal use. So that's why they have something called personal geo databases and that's mainly in access uh, format. Then the shape files were the first uh, mm, GIS files which were introduced way back in the early 90s and they use the DBase database format and they can be easily transported from, um, you know, even via emails. Then there is text files because we get a lot of our data in lat, uh, lat long form and that's always in a text file which can be converted to a spatial format. Then the drawing files from AutoCAD and um, other similar software is also converted to uh, you know, geo-reference data, either in polygon or point or line, whichever the case may be. A lot of the data is in raster files. Now, raster files are generally um, stored on a separate database server. They're never stored with vector data, but raster files are a big source of GIS data. And then JPEG files, which are generally, um, they don't have spatial data, but they are sometimes linked, you know, like a, with a point. Now, the role of the GIS DBA, as I said, is, uh, you know, you are, and uh, actually in charge of both the spatial and non-spatial data. And you know, this is just a general definition which I picked up. 
Uh, most of our data is uh, stored on data servers, which are either in SQL Server or PostgreSQL. We started uh, way back in the uh, mid-90s with SQL Server and STE, which is from ESRI, the early versions of STE. And uh, we still have like three production servers. Two are in SQL Server 2008, and so they're on their way to 2014. And we have one major production server in PostgreSQL. This is thanks to uh, very open-minded uh, uh, directors and other people in our local government which have allowed us to move to PostgreSQL. So we have uh, our major production database which serves all our web applications in PostgreSQL. PostgreSQL 9.3 and ArcGIS, which is the client software, is also 10.3. We're always two versions lower because for all the testing which needs to take place. And uh, we also have like shape files, JPEG files, as I said, LiDAR data, all this is stored on file servers. So this is a chart of our production servers. We have, as I said, two in SQL Server and one with PostgreSQL. And then we have a script server which hosts both SQL Server and PostgreSQL server, SQL server. And that server does all our major, runs all our major ETL packages. And uh, it's really complicated the way we run this it's because we have all these different formats of data. And that's true for most GIS units in the country. So, I mean, you can't get away from it. Then these are, the, of course, the same servers we have uh, development servers, and then we have a testing platform on the other end, which um, where we try out all the latest versions of Postgre and ArcGIS and SQL Server, and half the time, most of the latest and the cool versions of Postgre don't seem to work with our ArcGIS software, but it's, it gets there after two versions. Uh, other data we support, like as, is a big file server, which um, that serves a lot of our other websites and business units. And then we also have a SQL Server 2005 server for our air quality data. With these, this, all, this basically collects all JSON feeds from different air quality monitors all over the state, and those are converted to spatially referenced data. Our data maintenance and creation is done by our land record staff who edit directly on our SQL Server SD server through ArcMap, which is a part of ArcGIS. ArcGIS is a desktop software. It has two parts. One is ArcMap and one is our catalog. ArcMap is the actual tool to do analysis and um, build models and also to make uh, maps and edits. The other part is called our catalog from where you could load data, view data, but it doesn't do much beyond that. And then we have a mapping group which uh, makes maps and then does the analysis like, you know, if somebody wants to set up a new business in Charlotte and they may come to them to find the best location. So, and that's a big thing as many of you may have, not, you know, be already aware of that. So that's our mapping staff. They can directly upload sometimes data to our catalog. Some of them have permissions to do that. That means it goes straight to our Postgres server. We also have an intermediate development, another one. This is a Postgres SD server where some of the mapping staff directly edit on that and that is moved over by our catalog to our production SD server. Uh, most of our major automated data updates take place via the following methods. The ETL jobs could be the SSIS packages, which is SQL Server integrations packages, or Pentaho, that's open source, uh, done with Spoon. I don't know if any of you use Pentaho or Spoon. So then, of course, uh, we have plain SQL jobs, PostgreSQL jobs, uh, which is run via the extension PG agent. Then STE has its own language, so we have to run some conversions through command line STE, and of course they are scheduled via bat files. And then ArcGIS, the mark map which I talked about earlier, has a big model builder, and that is where the actual GIS data conversion and uh, modifications can be done. 
The models can be exported to Python scripts. So you can either write all this in Python with ArcPy, ArcPy class, or you can do it through Model Builder. And then all this, many of this, including the spoon jobs and the models and Pythons are all scheduled via DOS command bat files. Uh, some of the spatial files which we update daily is uh, like our address points. Uh, the whole county has, every address has a point. Um, and we have the land records file or the parcels file, lots as many of you may know, the streets file, uh, buildings footprints and the tax anno. These are our very critical data to any, any jurisdiction in the country because that's where how your 911 services work. If this fails or if it is outdated, we get calls from the police department or you know, and all kinds of people. Um, the other non-spatial data files which we use, which are joined with these spatial files, are the real estate files, which you know have information on ownership, sales, etc. These are actually uh, maintained by our IT staff, and they're on a SQL Server box, and we move it to our SQL Server box, and then finally to PostgreSQL. Um, this is just an example. Of, I'm going to show you some examples of our uh, spatial data flows on a day-to-day -day basis. The master ad address points I edited on a SQL Server um, through ArcMap. Uh, you know, they are either edited or created or, you know, whatever as new addresses come in or changes come in. A text file is generated from that, and that text file has X, Y coordinates. That is pulled into this model builder, which you see to the right uh, over here. And uh, that text file is then converted through this Python script or a model builder uh, to a shape file. The shape file in gen is then moved over to file servers because a lot of people still use shape file for you know, desktop manipulations. And it's also moved over to our production PostgreSD server. Now that's on the right shows the same model builder in Python format. And that's uh, you know, scheduled via a bat file. The lot, the parcel file, that's again edited by our land record staff on a SQL Server box. We use this Python script to just uh, um, extract a feature class which has only few fields which we need for our production um, server, which also hosts one of our major websites, which I'll show you at the end if we have a few minutes. So this parcel file is extracted via this script. And then there we use another VB script to check if there are any errors because sometimes this extract doesn't work well if somebody has entered maybe a parcel number is eight, eight digits and if they've entered more than eight digits it fails or if somebody has entered some apostrophe or some strange things even while editing the lines. Um, once we had a line drawn all over the county and none of the records went through. So things like that, you know, human errors. So we first check for that, and then if everything is good, we load it into our production server, and those are some of the Python scripts to the right. Um, and the parcel layer is then also joined to a lot of those spatial files which I talked about, which came from SQL Server to Postgre, which have all our ownership and sales and all that to create different views, parcel land views, sales, the KMA data. And that's what a view looks like in our catalog with the parcel files and the data showing up on the right side. The, these are those uh, non-spatial files which are used to create the views. They have land information like the basic land value, the assessed value, the building information, whether it's commercial, residential, how many bathrooms, fireplaces, et cetera, it has sales value, historic and present sales. Uh, location, which is the CITUS address, and then of course basic info like the deed page, deed value, and things like that. Mm, uh, these files, you know, this is an example of an SSIS package if you have ever used. This is SQL Server Integration Services, and that uh, moves it over from SQL to SQL. Uh, you could use 
uh, this to move it to PostgreSQL, but I haven't had much luck with it. So I generally just use this for SQL to SQL. And then I feel that uh, this uh, kettle from Pentaho is much more easier to use when you have to go from database to database. And so I use this to move from SQL to PostgreSQL. So the screen to the left is the actual transformation and to the right is a job in Kettle. And then it's scheduled via a bat file like that. And it's just an example of our task manager from our script server. Just a snapshot from one of our servers showing all the various jobs we run. Um, now, just uh, like how is Postgre used to display GIS data? You could either use PostGIS, which many of you are familiar with, and or you use ESRI Spatial Database Engine component. At Mecklenburg County, we use both. The PostGIS, uh, we have an uh, open source server like that with Postgre, Postgre and PostGIS, and it supports all our open source apps. But since uh, most of our database is edited by our catalog, our map, and most of our end users are still using our GIS, we use SD for our major production service. And who knows, maybe in a year we might get away with that and go to post GIS. Um, so for installing Postgre for us, we first have to install and then create an SD user with complete rights just like the Postgre user. And then you create the table space and database. Next, you create the SD schema and other schemas which may be necessary. Now, prior to our uh, Postgre 9.3, our GIS 10.3, at this point, you would have to install SDE. And that would install all the SD tables into the uh, Postgre database. But now, um, we can do it through the ARC toolbox. You just go there and enable it to become a geo database. So at that point, all these tables like SD table config and SD table registry, all this gets installed into the Postgre uh, database. This is just some samples of uh, data. Uh, restore and backup was done through command line till 9.3. Now it can be done directly uh, by a PG admin tool. And the only thing I think which is a little different, I don't know about uh, for our data, is that first we have to restore the public schema and then the SD schema. If we don't do it in that order, the data doesn't come through right. Uh, this is a snapshot of some of our major online applications. And I can show you an example. This is our website. It uh, If you enter like, um, it's called Polaris 3G, and I hope it works. Yeah, so I just typed in an address and it'll bring it up and also the pictures. So this is all part of our GIS database. So this is one of our major websites. It gets almost a uh, million hits a year. All realtors, even nosy neighbors, everybody's looking at this all the time. So uh, anyway, that's the main thing. Oh, it can't be seen. I thought I was, I don't know. Yeah, that's our website. So I just typed in that address on the top, and uh, this is what you get to see. So I'll do it again. It has these photographs. Uh, it also has historic pictures and backside and front side. So anyway, if you have any questions at this point, let me know. Yeah. Windows. Windows. Yeah, uh, we use Linux only for our um, the open source uh, with po just post GIS and post trace. That's done on Linux. This is all Windows because SD won't work with Linux. All the SRE software won't work with Linux. So. A 
kettle. It's called, it's from Pentaho. It's also an open source, I think. And it's, uh, it's uh, Pentaho and uh, it's called kettle. And then it has parts in it called pan and spoon and kitchen. So yeah, yeah, it's got all these strange names, but it works really well. So yeah, if you look up Pentaho, you should be able to see it. Yeah. Yes, I th yes, we, we, you can do it, but it's just like you can view it, but you can't do much beyond that. So that's why we have these two groups, you know. The ones who use PostGIS are just our web app people. None of the desktop users are really. But then it's also a matter of getting them, even getting them to use ArcGIS is a big thing sometimes. So to switch them to something else might take a long time, yeah. No, no. Oh, no, we don't. No. Uh, no, no, we do Postgre authentication, not Windows. And you know, for most of the readers, we have a, like a generic account, and then we have few for those who edit, and uh, the database use has a different, yeah. When we had, say, ST SQL Server, when we first started, we had like individual accounts, and that was, so we have moved to just like, we have 10 accounts, that's it, basically, so. And it's very odd that ESRI, I don't know if you have heard of it, ESRI has this big international conference um, in July in San Diego. And like about six years ago when we moved over, I was in the post administering Postgre with uh, SDE. There were six people sitting, but this year there were at least 200 people sitting. So there are a lot of people now doing this. You know, so a lot of cost saving, especially in the government sector. So. No, they edit uh, post uh, ST SQL Server. They are on still on SQL Server. And no, the other stuff is all the other users mapping and uh, all our websites, many of our websites. We have a lot of online applications. If you go to sharmec.org and there's a whole section called Map, all those are done through production. But I see no, uh, they could move to Postgre. It's just that we have some other databases in SQL Server, which are, especially all our real estate data, which I talked about. Those people don't want to work with Postgre. So it's just a matter of, you know, mindset. They don't want to change, yeah. And for all SQL Server, we have a whole, our whole IT group. There is a lot of database administrators, but this, we are on our own. It's like we are told if you have issues, if you're on your own, you're the ones who move to this. So, yeah, but you know, we've, we've been with this for almost six years and I feel there are less issues, so, yeah. <laughs> job security. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Well, 